Good afternoon, y'all. Good evening. Good to see everybody. Glad I didn't fall on my face. Guess that's what I get for laughing at the girl at work for falling up the stairs the other day. Um, I heard Pastor Daryl go over the prayer list. Y'all just continue to pray for um, our church and our youth. Uh, Wednesday is kind of slow going, and Monday night's getting better. Um, but uh, you guys just pray for us as we try to get these kids coming and get them back involved. It's uh, it's not always easy once they get uh, complacent staying home on Mondays and Wednesdays, and school schedule is something else. So y'all guys keep us in your prayers because it, I, I think a lot of teachers don't know which way's up right now. There's so much going on between virtual day and A day and B day. Um, a lot of different things going on at school and trying to, and, but, but I will say the kids have been good about keeping their mask on and they've done a good job. So um, y'all just keep praying for, for everyone involved in those situations. Um, keep Miss Nash and Atlanta in your prayers Puerto Rico I spoke to Daniel this week and they're excited they're gonna have a lot of teams coming in so we're gonna go ahead and plan our week as soon as possible so we can have that set and ready to go and we're looking forward to getting out working on that property and getting you guys some video and some pictures and sending them back um, any unspoken prayer requests all right let's pray Father, we thank you for another day. We thank you for your many blessings. And God, at this time, we just, uh, Lord, we just ask that you continue to be with our community, Lord, with our schools, our church, our church members. Father, I pray that you would just um, continue to minister to people who for whatever reason lord they 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 haven't gotten back into coming to your house and and worshiping lord i pray that you would lord that you would just tug at their heart and lord help them to see that um they need to be here lord we need to be here worshiping you and we need to be here learning about you and giving our kids good habits and showing them uh, that they need to be at church and they need to be a part of something much greater than ourselves and father we pray for our missionaries we pray for all the ones that they come in contact with lord so many lives have been changed through those ministries and we just thank you for those opportunities that you've given us to be that light in those communities the opportunity you've given us to make changes in those communities lord and i just pray you continue to do that lord be with each and every one that's here tonight I know, Lord, there's many of them that have requests that, Lord, they just uh, have to themselves. And, Lord, you know all about it. So I pray that you would just be in those situations, that your will be done. Lord, be with Evangelina and Eben as they bring the music tonight. Lord, be with Pastor Darrell as he brings the message. And, Father, I just pray that um, if there's anyone here that doesn't know you, Lord, that they wouldn't walk out of this place before uh, coming to know you as Lord and Savior. Father, we love you. We thank you for all that you do for us each and every day. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We are in Psalm 58. And if you're able, I'm going to ask that you stand for the reading of God's word. It says, Do you indeed speak righteousness, you silent ones? Do you judge uprightly, you sons of men? No, in heart you work wickedness. You weigh out the violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf cobra that stops its ear, which will not heed the voice of charmers, charming ever so skillfully. Break their teeth in their mouth, O God. Break out the fangs of the young lions, O Lord. Let them flow away as water which run continuously. When he, bends his, when he bends his bow, let his arrows be as if, as if cut in pieces. 
Let them be like a snail which melts away as it goes. Like a stillborn child of a woman that they may not see the sun. Before your pots can fill the burning thorns, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind. As in his living and burning wrath, the righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, so that men will say, Surely there is a reward for the righteous. Surely he is God who judges in the earth. Good evening, church. Uh, Tonight we are going to sing the hymn, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, so you can all sing along with me. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name. my tummy. Yeah, I like that. (laughs) If that doesn't get you excited, we call on the coroner for you. So, tonight is one of those things, let me just warn you, I am a Bible-believing believer. How many of you all believe that? Which means I'm a Bible-believing preacher that preaches the Bible. And when the Bible deals with areas that might reflect upon politics, I preach it as I read it. Anybody say amen? I had one day somebody said when I said as Christians we should support Israel. They said, you can't say that at the altar. You're telling people how to vote. And I said, I am not telling anybody how to vote. But if the Bible does, you should listen. Anybody say amen? Amen. He didn't come back to church, but that's beyond my control. Tonight is going to point in a direction about what we should be praying for regarding judges in our land. And I know right now it's a political topic, but for us it's a biblical talk. Everybody say amen. I preach the Bible, and I don't mispreach it or sideways preach it or sidestep preach it because it's a hot topic in society. I preach it, and I let it fall. And if it leans one way more than the other, I still preach it. Amen? I made a commitment in my life that I will not let society or events change how I preach. Preach, let it fall. If I make somebody upset, it's not the first time today. But it's very powerful. We have a God in heaven who is righteous. And when we live within his righteousness, we have peace with God and peace with others. The best upon our ability. 
And we have a God in heaven who wants and will have righteousness on earth. Because when there's righteousness on earth, there is peace. And with righteousness, we have a law. And God Almighty is the lawgiver. And through history, you study Judges, 1 Sex Samuel, and you will see this. When there was a righteous judge, there was a righteous land. When there was an unrighteous judge, what followed was an unrighteous land with unrighteous people. And history repeats itself. A message for our times. Verse 1, Psalm 58. Good stuff. Do you indeed speak righteousness? The first thing we should ask for in every judge over our land, every leader, and it goes beyond the Supreme Court to all the courts throughout the land, to the state courts, it goes to the pastors and to the congregations. We could say, oh judge, we could say, oh congregation. I've been in some congregations that weren't very nice. How about you? Do you indeed and speak righteousness? Do you indeed speak what God's calls righteousness as righteousness of how one should live? You silent ones? Do you allow your silence to go on and wickedness to prevail? A lot of questions. Do you judge uprightly? The first thing we should want for a judge in the land a leader of a church, a congregation of a church, a head of a household. Do you judge uprightly? You sons of men, specifically referring now to judges. Do you speak righteousness? Do you judge righteously? Look at the answer, and this is hard. No. In heart, you work with wickedness. What you're supposed to do is have righteous law brings about peace. It blesses God. It shows a love for God. It shows a love for mankind. And if you don't have that in society, it's a problem of the heart. In your heart, if the answer is no, in your heart, there lies wickedness. What's the first requirement of a judge we should pray for? The heart of righteousness and the desire to please God. You're saying you're combining religion and secular. I'm saying I am not combining, but I'm not dividing. I'm saying we should want righteous rule. You weigh out the violence of your hands and the earth. Let me tell you what happens when there's wickedness in the process of the heart of making laws. You're not so concerned about what's right in the eyes of God. You're not so concerned about what's best for the people of the land. When you start weighing out things, you start saying, what's best for me? It's not about you. It's about God. And when God is involved, God calls for justice and righteousness, which brings peace. The first call in the prayer is pray for righteous judges in the land, current time. But it's also a warning. We'll see it hard. God will condemn unjust judges, just like he will bring condemnation upon unjust people and unjust leaders, starting with pastors. Check your heart. Check your heart. We always need to check our heart. The day you stop checking your heart is the day you're in trouble. We're going to see why in a minute. There's a lot of charmers out in there. Anybody know what a charmer is? 
Somebody that can take a good person and speak them into believing right is wrong and wrong is right. There's a lot of charmers in the world today. Anybody say amen? Some of them are at pulpits. Careful. If you notice, I always have an outline in front of you. Do you know why I started that 20 plus years ago? Because that's how I was trained. You know why I was trained to do that? Because anybody ever questions me whether I preach the word of God, I will go back and sit down and say, there it is. Very important. We're not charmers. We are preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ and believers that believe it. Verse 3. The wicked. Now we're talking where there's unrighteous judges. There's going to be unrighteous people in the land. And God calls that wicked. The wicked are estranged from the womb. Could it have such effect on society? We know all have sinned. But to say they are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born. And that, that applies to all of us, by the way. We all need the Savior. His name is Jesus. Speaking lies. We don't have to be taught to sin. We need to be taught to turn to Jesus Christ and live under righteousness. We must have just rules, just leaders, just preachers. But it talks about those that have gone astray and have not turned around. We have to be very careful. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. A serpent will bite you. Poison of a cobra will bite you. I did a lot of studying years ago. Dr. J. Dennis wrote a wonderful book on toxic people. I'm very careful not to let toxic people have rule over my heart. How about you? He says the wicked, their bite is toxic and it's going to sting you. And sometimes it's done in a way that you don't even know you're stung. And it affects your mind. It affects your heart. It affects the days following you. There's a spiritual battle beyond what we can see. He says, wickedness is like poison of a cobra. It stings you. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. They are like the deaf cobra that stops its ear. So a cobra, we've seen the videos probably, I've never seen it in person. There are charmers that can teach a cobra to be obedient. I've even seen them reach above and kiss it on the head. Do you know what I mean? Come out of the little wicker thing. But when that cobra gets deaf to the ear and doesn't listen to its charmer, it'll bite you. It'll even bite the hand that feeds it. See, the hardest part about that is it's not teachable and uncontrollable. One thing we need to pray for is not only just judges, but the heart of the people. See, you can have a just judge teaching correct living, righteousness, obeying the law, but have unrighteous people that are like that deaf cobra that aren't going to listen. And then we have that. So we got to pray for not only just judges, but the hearts of the people to want to live in a way that brings about righteousness and peace. And I tell you today, we should be praying overtime. Isn't it neat, the Bible? The Bible applies throughout the ages. The wisdom of God applies today. Stops its ears, which will not heed the voice of the charmers. Charmer ever so skillfully. There are those in the generation of current that you can as skillfully teach them God's ways. But the problem is their heart. And since the problem lies in the heart 
of unrighteousness, it affects their ears, and they are deaf to the word of God. The verses 3 through 5 are saying, in a little bit we'll see, we need just judges, we need just laws. But when they become deaf to justice, God will judge. And we say, well, I see him getting away with it. Really? You see, and that's the problem of earth today. And I've had people say, how can I believe in a God when I see so much violence? And I'm saying, you haven't seen the rest of the story. I'm going to tell you about it tonight. Nobody gets away with anything. God is just and God will rule. Temporarily, they think they're getting away with it. God's not done yet. Charming ever so skillfully. I want you to keep your Bibles everywhere you go. We must teach the young generation to bring their Bibles to church. We must teach some of the older generation too, by the way. That's something I see often that I don't need a Bible. I know you're going to preach it. It'll be on the screen. No. That's your study book for life. I've got Bibles from the day I was born again. And they've got so many notes. Some of them are falling apart and been taped many times over. And I go back sometimes when I'm trying to understand a new believer's heart. And I'll read notes that I wrote to myself 20 years ago. And I'm like, look at how, how hungry I was. You should have your Bible. Go deep. It's a gem. Because if you don't, there are charmers. Some are in pulpits. And they'll charm you the world's way. And you need to look at your Bible and say, no, sir. God's way. I preached in Florida. I think I told you the story. My first or second year as a pastor, I got up and brazenly, 35-year-old Daryl, and says, in this church, I'm here, and it's going to be God's way or the highway. And about 20% of the church last next Sunday hit the highway. So I guess I got my way. And then the church grew like crazy. We've got to have a life with judges that want God's way. Pray for that. And people and leaders and church leaders and pastors that want God's way. And I think we have to preach it unapologetically. Now, a 56-year-old Daryl would have preached that sermon a little different. But I would still preach it. It's God's way. Verse 8. Call for judgment. Break their teeth. In their mouth. They say, Daryl, you said that. The Bible says it. Oh God, break their fangs out of young lions. He's saying, judge, Lord, judge. Do not let the land be taken over by unjust judges, unjust rulers, unjust laws. They speak these things. They're charmers. Do what you got to do, but don't let it be God. Oh, Lord, let them flow away as the water which runs continually. They will come, but let them go. <laughs> When he bends his bow, let his arrows be cut in pieces. May the things he does, the things that he wants to do to cause pain. God, you're powerful. Stop it. Break it. That can be like a snail. Which melts away as it goes when the sun comes down on it. Come on, son. And I say that respectfully. Come on, Jesus. Like a stillborn child of a woman, very painful it's going to be for those who do not repent. That they may not see the sun. We said, Daryl, you really call for judgment? Yes. I believe we should pray for God to judge the wicked, the wicked rulers. You say, why, Daryl? 
I don't want my children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren I may never meet to be led in a way that's ungodly. Can anybody say amen? I may not be able to do much to change this, but God can, and God will. Verse 9. Before your pots can fill the burning thorns, he shall take them away as with the whirlwind. As in his living and burning wrath, as sure as Jesus Christ rose from the grave and lives is the surety that God will judge. And it will be soon and very soon. God's in control. God will judge unrighteousness with the burning of a wrath before the temperature heats up. God will judge. You see, as Christians, we can live with confidence. We may lose a battle, but God's going to win the war. And just sit back and watch. It's about living with hope and living with prayer life. Israel went through unjust judges and just judges. They went through unjust kings and just kings. And where there was a just judge and a just king, God blessed the land. But when the opposite happened, it was not blessed. It was soon judged and the people were dispersed. So what do we do? What do we do when we see like Things get worse and not better. And and through anybody's life, Mr. Steve, I think you're our senior or Orville. I don't know, but I'll say you. How many times have you seen the ebb and flow of righteous and unrighteousness through your life? This will happen. What do we do? Verse 10 and 11 in closing. The righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. Hey, listen, don't get discouraged when there's a flow that goes, like, really the wrong way. But God, how could you let that happen? If God could use Pharaoh, God can use anybody today. His will will be done. Anybody say amen? Pharaoh thought he was strong, but God had his way. The righteous will rejoice. They'll rejoice. They're going to rejoice. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Wickedness will be judged. Who is the almighty eternal judge? It is Jesus Christ. It is God the Father. Even the Supreme Court judges will be judged by God Almighty. They may may be judges over man, but God is the judge over mankind. So when you see one that's righteous or unrighteous according to the word of God, they will be judged by God Almighty. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. So that men will say, surely there is a reward for righteousness. Two closing points. There is a reward for righteousness in your house. It may not be the quick trip to getting rich or getting this or getting that. But God will reward it. There is a reward for righteousness in a marriage. And God will reward it. There is a reward for righteousness in a country, and God will reward it. Surely, there is reward for righteousness. When you do something right, it's because you have a right standing and desire with God to please Him, and God will reward it. Righteousness is one living according to a right standard with God, period. Not according to man, it's according to God, and God will reward it. 
How many of y'all believe the things you do that nobody knows about? God sees. He'll reward. It's coming. Surely he is God who judges in the earth. You say, yeah, he's going to judge it in time. No. He's going to judge all along. I'll tell you something that happened to me. and I told, asked Cindy to come in the office. I got a note from somebody who was very hard on my pastorate 20 years ago to call them about four or five months ago. Cindy gave me the note. I was like, oh. I don't want to call them. Very difficult on me. I don't want to get back into that. I said, Cindy, come on in the office. I'll make this call, and you're going to be my witness. And if I get out of this conversation, it's because I'm not going to get involved with stuff. That person was on the phone, and I'm not going to go any deeper. It's no one's business, but theirs and mine and my wife and Cindy, because she was my witness. And the person talked about life. How you doing? Boys. So on. And they say, Daryl, I just want to apologize for how I treated you 20 years ago. Will you forgive me? I said, I already have forgiven you. But I need to tell you, you're forgiven. You see, in their heart, I think they were under condemnation until they made that right. The blessings would be restrained. How many of y'all believe that? I said, I, I forgave you years ago. Doesn't mean we're on each other's Christmas card list. Because I don't want to hold grudges. I, I don't want that in my heart. And it took, it took time. It was hurtful. I went home and I said to Shell, what happened? She says, Daryl, what they believe, because Shelly knew them, is that when you do that and you live like that in an unjust way, it's going to block your blessings. And they came to the point they needed to make it right. Surely he is God who judges in the earth. And I believe God will bless them for that act of mercy and confession. How many of y'all say amen? I'd rather God judge me now so I can repent than judge me later. Now, I'm a forgiven sinner. But sometimes how God judges us later is condemnation until we do repent. Anybody say amen? Tonight's Bible is all about just judges. So the land will be just and there will be peace and there will be righteousness and we would have a land in right accord with God. It's very important. I believe as Christians I'm not talking about process or timing or any political party. I'm talking about the prayer for judges over the land that are in a right accord with the code of God and his law. Some neat words, isn't it? Father, bless our hearts that we would understand deeper wisdom. There are charmers and there is the Holy Spirit. Help us to know your word. Teach us, Spirit, to go deep. That we can apply your word into our thoughts. We pray for America, especially at this time. We pray for just judges throughout the land. Just leaders. Just churches that want to please you. Help me to be such, Lord. And I ask this Christ in your precious name. Amen. You are dismissed.